Well, welcome back to Montessori Education Week. Today is day two. My name is Teresa Wittry and I am the director of Immaculata Catholic Montessori. And here with me again is Anita Wolbert, who is our Montessori master teacher and our local Montessori certification school director. And today we are going to show you the hands-on lessons and activities that the children at our school get to use on a three-year cycle. And yesterday, and you know, we talked about the stages of development and how important the three to six-year-old stage is. And um, so we're going to show you the progression of how we help the child with what they need at each stage of the three to six-year phase. So, okay. okay. All right. So we please have, show us what we have. Okay. okay. Well, I will. Um, yes. And so as Teresa said, we, we talked about stages of development, which is so vital, such a vital part of Montessori philosophy. Um, and we, we talked about the, the full range of child development. Uh, and today we're focusing on the, the age three through six, which is called the early childhood, ages three through six, three-year period. Um, and well, the thing we said yesterday, what uh, to cover that whole um, spectrum of child development, we said we're just going to focus on what are they trying to do and what, what can we do to help them. And so that's, I'll keep bringing that up as we go along because we'll show so many things that we have for them to do and ways that we can help them in their development. Because early childhood is, it, it's an educational program, um, it's an educational program with the focus of supporting the children's development. Physically, cognitively, socially, emotionally, and spiritually. Supporting their development, it's not just about reading, writing, doing math, and rivers of the world, that's more um, later stage to get all that content, but this is about development, helping them uh, develop in all the domains of, of their life. Uh, so, what we've put out is first year, second year, third year, some materials, and we'll do this in two segments. So today we'll be doing practical life and sensorial. The full name for practical life is early preparation Excuse me. Uh, the full name of Practical Life is Coordination and Control of Movement Through Exercises of Practical Life. So the point is movement, helping them. So this is really about the physical, helping them move. They know how to walk and run and climb, but now we're refining our movements. And so we'll be showing some Practical Life, year one, year two, year three. And then Sensorial is helping them come to understand the world around them and to have more of a sense of um, time, person, time, place, and how things are in the world, <laughs> okay? So we'll show some of those materials, sensorial, year one, year two, year three. And then for tomorrow's uh, episode, we will show the language materials and the math materials for early childhood. So it's very exciting, and it was too many to show in one section. So here we go with, um, uh, coordination control of movement. So children at age three, they may be coloring with crayons or markers, um, but now we are helping them to refine their movements. And so one way to help them do that, knowing that they will be um, holding a pencil soon in writing, not just coloring or scribbling, but they will be forming letters, writing their names, um, and uh, accurately writing the letters of our alphabet, so to help them gain control of these three important fingers, the pincher group, uh, we have some little cloths that we show them how to put it over their fingers and hold it, and now we'll go find some dust and how excited they are. There's always some dust to be found on the bells, on the rods, um, on the piano, somewhere in the classroom, and then they shake out the over the wastebasket, shake the dust off, examine it, can it be used again, or should we put it in the laundry? And so there's some problem solving, it's not just coordination movement, there's some problem solving. A little brush to get the corners, some of the furniture have little corners, and so we have a little brush 
that can be used. And again, we're holding it like a pencil. And so they could be doing this, but now we're showing a refinement of movement of how to use a tool, and a tool being an extension of the hand. Okay, so there's dusting, another early lesson, first year, and this would generally the first year are three-year-olds, um, and they are most interested in these lessons. If we wait till they're four or five, these lessons aren't quite as interesting to them. So this is really perfect for the child who has potty trained and is kind of, <laughs> my teacher would say, has exhausted the resources of the home. They need something more. Okay, so we have a spooning lesson. And so we have a spoon, and they may have been eating their Cheerios like this, and they can get them to the mouth, but now we're going to emphasize this uh, refined use of this tool. And so what we have are some lovely bowls with some blackness. So just listen to the sound. So, and then they would continue to spoon the beans from one to another, transferring the material from one to the other. This is very interesting to a three-year-old to just transfer something. But before they do it, the teacher has carried it over to a table, sat down carefully, said to the child, watch, my turn first, watch. The teacher does it very carefully with precision, with carefulness, with great interest and concentration while the child is uh, watching. Three-year-olds can do this. And then the teacher completes it, puts it back on the shelf, and invites the child, now it's your turn. Your turn to spoon the beans. Now the child can take a turn. So the child has seen it done perfectly. We practice. Um, all right, and so we're developing those fingers, but also to be able to carry a tray across the room, across the room, so it's not just refining the control of movement of their fingers, but of their whole body. And to watch out, there's 15, 18 other children in the room, people moving, things going on. So to develop that carefulness and um, precision. Three-year-olds, a little bit more advanced, would be an example is a spunnel lesson. So we'll go to the water source and get water up to the line that is there and come back and we have a little funnel, a very narrow mouth vessel, and the children would be then pouring water through the funnel and how interesting they find that. Um, after they have poured it, they pour the water out. They have a drying cloth to dry any spots, to dry, so taking care of things. Everything is there for them. Um, and this you know, is just simply pouring water through a funnel, very interesting to a three-year-old. But this leads to um, the flower arranging lesson that comes up later, where they have various vases, and some of them have narrow mouths and they need to use a funnel so they can pour water in. It leads to when they're in the atrium, they're preparing flowers for the prayer table. So we're doing many things that will then transfer to some other skill and some other joy that is, has a lot more sequence and a lot more precision required. Okay, so those are some basic transfer lessons also in the practical life area for the beginning children, the button frame. So at this age, they are learning to independently dress themselves and undress themselves. And hopefully parents will choose clothing that they can get in and out of. Um, the Oshkosh buckles with a sweater under it with a belt and <laughs> is pretty difficult for them, so we like simple clothing. But even so, the button, the buttons might be under the chin or down here, and how can you see them? The buttons are small, and there's just one, or um, like the buttons on their pants. So with this, they can take it to a table. It's right in front of them. The teacher will take her turn and very with precision, bring the fabric around the button, and let them see how it 
looks now. And now another one. And then continue unbuttoning them all. And then we button it back up. The teacher will show how this is done, how we grasp the edge of the button and pull the fabric around the button. And the teachers know how to do this beautifully because they practice by the hour. Um, and then it's the child's turn. It's right in front of them. We have a snap frame, button frame, zippers, buckles, Velcro, um, hook and eye frame, tying frame. Um, so this is kind of the first year activity. So that's an example of the kind of things in practical life. We have three shelves of things in practical life. The first shelf is for our first year children, really. Okay, so also in our first year, there, so they'll be doing many practical life lessons and sensorial. Okay, so in sensorial, we had to choose a sample of what to bring here to show you. And um, one of the early lessons would be to build the pink tower. And that's kind of famous in Montessori, the pink tower. Well, I have four of the cubes here. It's actually, the tower has 10 cubes. They're precisely um, um, manufactured. So this is one centimeter cubed two centimeter cubed, three, four, all the way to 10 centimeters cubed, which would hold a liter of liquid. So it's very precise mathematically. Um, they're all pink, they're wooden cubes. They're all pink and they're exactly the same except for the size. And if we had a blue one, a pink one, a yellow one, and we had pictures of Mickey Mouse on one side or Power Rangers on the other, then it's like, what are we sorting? Are we sorting colors? Are we sorting, you know, favorite characters? It's very clear that the sort here is size. And in the beginning, many three-year-olds, it takes them a lot of practice. The teacher will take them out one at a time, build the tower, take the tower down, the child then has a turn, and it may be the perfect sequence of 10 down to one, but usually it's not. It takes them a lot of practice, and that's the great thing because after they've been shown the lesson, then they get to choose to do it whenever they want. And so the practice is where the real learning happens. Um, okay, so similar, to this one would be the broad stair, which I just brought the first three prisms. Um, and again, it's mathematically precise. This has one centimeter square on the end, but it's one decimeter in length, 10 centimeters. And 10 centimeters, so, so this is the square. It's a two um, centimeter square on the end, and the same one decimeter in length. And so it builds a stair from 1 to 10. And so the point on uh, the first one was size. And this one is also size, but more specifically width. So they get a little bit wider, 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 wider. So the 10 centimeter, um, the 10 broad stair is quite big and quite heavy prism. And another one that is also um, size, but the specialty is length. So we have, um, actually, these are two decimeters in length, excuse me. These are two decimeters in length, and the square is the same as the square on those. Okay, but this is one decimeter, 10 centimeters. Okay, now it's length, and so we carry it like this, where this one we carried it across so the child can feel the increasing width. Now we're feeling the increasing length with every one we pick up. So in these, um, the long stair is at random. It's quite a challenge to put them in perfect order. And the longest one is one meter. So it's about this long. For the little ones, that's quite a stretch. So this is just an example of the wooden material, wood, we call them the woods materials for the beginning children. Um, they need to be successful here before we go to more advanced ones because this is Oh, easier for them. What else do we do in sensorial? Well, this is really about our visual sense, um, but we also do things for t 
tasting, smelling, uh, touching. What did I leave out? The eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, the skin, right? So this is mostly our eyes will tell us, even though our hand is cooperating, feeling the different sizes, but it's mostly a visual discrimination work. But also, how about for our ears? So I'm not sure what order these again. Okay, so let me just put it the other way. Um, so this, these, we have a, a two sets of eight bells, and they have matching tones. But it's on a piano keyboard. It's one octave from middle C to the next to high C. Those eight notes. And um, since we're doing voice, then we used uh, uh, solfege, do, re, mi. So we'll just listen. So we're not playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star right now at age three. We're listening to tones. And so we listen with the little child till the sound is all gone. And then another day, another bell. A different tone. This is a musical instrument that is really a very high quality tones. And, but for the little ones, it's not about playing songs, which has mixed, you know, a lot of tones mixed together. This is just listening to a sound and different, hearing a different, that there are such things as different tones, all right? Um, this back to another visual lesson. These are color tablets. And so we have two red, two yellow, two blue, two orange. So those are primary, secondary, and tertiary colors that they'll be all mixed up and they pair them. Put the reds together, blue, the yellow together. It's a visual lesson. The beauty of this, the simplicity of this, the beauty of this is in the simplicity as if I wanted to the color green, for example, if we go outside and I point to a leaf or I point to um, the grass and say, now that is green, well, in the leaf there's also the stem, there's also the flower, there's also the pot, there's also maybe a little bug on it, maybe there, there's an old leaf, a young leaf. So this is just green. There's nothing else to say about this except it's green. There's nothing else we can say about this other than it's red. It's not a red apple. It doesn't have a smell, a texture that's different from the green. The only difference is the color. So Montessori designed these so the children can focus just on that one aspect of color. Um, I brought this fish puzzle. We have a cabinet that has puzzles for the five classifications of vertebrates animals with the backbone and the fish is the first one in the at classification and so it's a, just simply a puzzle uh, it has lovely wooden knobs on it so it's not a puzzle that you dump out and then put together again where we are exercising these this group of fingers to hold a pencil the same way we're holding the mallet with those three fingers the same way we're holding this little cube with these three fingers. So we're really helping to refine this, this movement. So we make, so we buy it, we have the puzzle, but then we make a control. And so they can build on the color control. And so um, instead of just dumping it out and putting it back in, we like to extend things. So we have a color control, which is very, something that three-year-olds can do quite, um, quite well without a problem and but then we can make it a little bit more challenging with no color and now they're focusing on the line and so to be able to match so this is the visual discrimination so we said that we're helping support their development so their eyes their ears sense of taste touch smell um, coordination of movement and these things lead to real knowledge this could be a puzzle of Mickey Mouse and Power Rangers. Okay, those are my two examples. <laughs> um, but why not have something that, that leads to real knowledge? And so they all know the five classifications of vertebrates, and um, it, it makes later education easier because it's, 
it, it, it's something that they already knew without having to um, pass a test on it or something. Yes, we, these animals have backbones, we also have invertebrates, we have the butterflies and the bees, we do that also another time. So I think that's a pretty good sample of what we're doing first year. Uh, this kind of moves into, so, Teresa. <laughs> She's back. back. <laughs> so now, Anita, we've gone through year one. Our three-year-olds have gone through their first year at Immaculata. They've had a lot of lessons with movement. They've had the sensorial experience with all their five senses. So now they come back to us the next fall. And now they're four. And also, we didn't get to show our language because we'll show that tomorrow. But right. there's a lot that we do in language. And so I guess we'll just, I don't know if this goes on the language or the sensorial. There's some but. overlap between <laughs> some of these but avenues. One but thing that we also do, and so yesterday when we talked about stages of development, talked about the, the young child, that they're, they, they love words. Yes. They're, they just want to know the names of things. And so to give them vocabulary that's in a classified way. These are we call these animals of Idaho. So we have a grizzly bear, we have a moose, and a mountain goat, a wolf. And so we have lots of things that are uh, classified in a certain category and give them the names. And uh, so that's another thing that we're doing, which is kind of language, but it's Right, because the other interesting part of this material is the sizes of the animals are kind of proportionate to what yeah. they would be. So yeah. that's another sensorial aspect. Yes, and then the surprise part is that we have a matching set. <laughs> so, so they not only learn that this is a moose, even though maybe they already knew and they explained it to me, but um, and now we can put out a rug and then we can put them together and it's so satisfying for children. They love matching they love things. To match. Absolutely. And and that's a that is a visual discrimination which prepares for for reading to to see differentiate between an A and an O and an E takes a keen eyesight. Right. So with the little ones having something to match is yes. very exciting to them, especially with an animal. Oh yes. <laughs> and an Idaho animal. An yeah, Idaho they animal. might see one on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so you said now we're coming so to now year, two. year two. Again, we're focusing today on practical life and on sensorial, and tomorrow we will touch on language and math. So the way I, I've heard it explained, you can tell me if I'm incorrect because I am still an intern. Um, we have she's here with the children every day, every bless her heart, very they happily. Have, too. Yes, <laughs> they are the best. We have the best children. Um, so. We have what they, what I guess Montessori called the academic part, the language and the math. And then you have this other part, the practical life and sensorial, that is a gateway to those other avenues. So, very foundational. Foundational. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. we'll go through yeah. every subject. And there's actually a really neat graph that maybe we'll share on a different thing that has how all all of these avenues actually go into all the different subjects. Every discipline you would yeah. want to study. It's actually so we've done zoology, music theory. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when they're done here, they will have a <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, okay, well, I will let you get started on okay. year two. All right, so, but, so we're still, this is a year two, it's a transfer lesson. We transferred beans, we poured with a funnel. But something, how about something a little bit more um, precision required? I, I think of this as a preparation for chemistry. Maybe this one is also. But here, we'll take the pitcher. This is called pouring water at different levels. We'll go fill it up at the water source in the kitchen to the line, come back. We put a little drop of uh, food color in it so that they can see, because water is just kind of um, invisible. So they can see, and then they will pour water to the first line, and then water to the second line. I don't know if you can see it on the mm -hmm. camera. And then the third line is lower. And if they've poured carefully, if they put the correct amount of water in here, and they pour precisely to the line, they will have poured all of the water. 
Um, so it's a, there's a control of error there that the material lets the child know that something's wrong if it doesn't come out right. Maybe they didn't put the right amount of water in, maybe they too much, too little. So believe me, they will go back and practice and practice and practice this. And our teachers will also practice this a lot because when they show it, they want to be sure they've done it right. So it's very satisfying to pour it right to the line. That's very satisfying for a young child. They, they are in a sensitive period for order where they, they like to know how things go. And uh, so random and chaos is not, is not, is not uh, friendly for them. We have a, a lovely little cloth to wipe up any spills and spots, to restore it, to have it ready for the next child. So there's thoughtfulness, carefulness. They're made of glass. They could, they're not looking where they're going, trip over another child. So we, this would not be appropriate for two, year old, two years old children because they're not ready for that. They're not steady enough on their feet. Uh, they just don't have the awareness yet. But we're building awareness through these materials that are helping to build that awareness and that carefulness. Of course, we wouldn't show this to a child who hadn't been able to carry one of these first. These have an edge, a little safer. Um, okay, now with more sequence, this is practical life moving beyond just a transfer. This is actually called polishing silver or polishing metal. And so we actually have a little bit of silver polish in here and cotton ball, wiping cloth, all the materials, a special silver brush, all the materials that we would need to polish metal. And so how satisfying that is when they have a spoon, a silver spoon or a tray, a little egg cup I think we have, and they put the polish on and wait, take it off, and they see tarnish. Oh, tarnish. It's so amazing and they clean it they wash their hands after but there's this very specific sequence of taking all the materials out one step one step two step three there's a sequence that the teacher shows carefully and then the child takes a turn doesn't mean they do it perfectly or exactly like the teacher did but there is a sequence just like if you're going to play tennis there is there, there is a game, there is a way things are done. If you're going to fly a jet, there is a way things are done. It's not a creative um, experience. And either is polishing metal. So um, they're, they're learning how to do things, everyday things in their world. We sometimes call these the humble tasks of daily living. We also have brooms and mops and um, table washing lesson. I was going to bring table washing, but it didn't fit on the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, so practical life, more sequence. It's still movement, but it's more sequence and more precision required to be able to do that. Okay. In sensorial, we had the colored tablets where we simply matched, but now here I have green that goes from dark green to light green, and there are five, six, seven of them, and very, very small, precise gradations of that color. Um, and so they've seen green before. It's not news to them that this is green. But to put these out at random and then grade them precisely dark, gradually, gradually, gradually getting lighter and lighter, and then we might discover when we look at uh, plants in our, and we always have plants in our classroom, um, that some leaves may be dark like this, and some of them may be light, or maybe not that light, maybe this light, and, and to notice that, and it's really, uh, it, it awakens a curiosity about nature and knowledge about nature. Maybe the new leaf that's just unfolding is lighter green, the older one, it's very dark and then it starts to fade and it starts to become yellow. Um, so uh, again, it's just the color. So there are nine different colors that they do a gradation. So that's very exciting. And some source, so that's for the visual sense too. And, and maybe they'll, they'll find something in the classroom that's just this color of green. We'll play a game and look for something. Well, the fish, the caudal fin, well, it's a little bit more yellow, but just to awaken 
them to more exactness. Uh, for the sense of touch, I don't think we showed anything in the first year, but this, for example, this is matching fabrics. So I have some cotton flannel and then a um, satin matching, and so we have a whole collection of fabrics that are very distinct, um, feel distinct uh, texture. And, and this is where we get to put on a blindfold, and we have maybe three of them or four of them at random and find the ones that match. And so they're out there and we're feeling them and feeling them and we find them, oh, I think these are the same. And then when we finish, we take off the blindfold and of course, because the colors are so different, it's immediately clear that we have matched them correctly or not. And so this is to refine the sense of touch, of gradation, of uh, we also send paper tablets and other things for the sense of touch. That's just an example. So we have lots of sets here. There's a wool, a silk. Um, I had a burlap at one point. A terry cloth, just different. Okay, so what about we had the bell? And so now, we come to the next year, we've listened to tones, and I said we had two sets. We have the, the ones on the wooden base and the ones with the white base. Now I'm going to listen for one that matches. It sounds just the same. Let's listen. Together, and we may even decide to match our voice. Let's see if we can match our voice. Um, so there's some basic voice training that can go with this. But now, again, we're not playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We're just simply, we've listened to tones and now we're finding a tone that matches. Kind of like we found something visually that matches now something auditorially that matches. How interesting. And it's helping to develop and refine the sense of hearing. Okay, to distinguish between a, a vowel sound, a, e, i, a, a, very similar. Okay, so in order to really hear sounds in words, you know, there's a refined uh, auditory sense. So this is supporting their development, helping or make later learning easier, and also appreciation of the world around them and sounds they hear. Okay, what else do we have? So we have solid geometry. So we have these um, geometric forms, and these are mostly, <laughs> initially, just for them to handle and notice things about them, and they may notice that um, that this one uh, has the same base as that. Okay, and there's something else that I didn't mention. When we get to second year, we want to be giving names to everything. Um, and so they will actually be learning the vocabulary of a cube. I mean, it's a block, but precisely it is a cube. And it is a square base prism. And we have a triangular base prism, square base pyramid. And so they may notice that the square base pyramid fits on the prism. They both have a square base. How interesting. Oh, this one also has a square base. Okay, so, um, so here they can learn their eager for words, they like words, and we want to give them language that leads to something. It's not just some dinosaur that lived in some other age that really isn't useful at this age, and they may want to study that later, 
But now this leads to um, some real knowledge. How interesting about this familiar shape, a cone, that it has the same base as a cylinder, and this triangular pyramid and a triangular prism. So this is, uh, these kind of things are so beautiful. They're so lovely to handle. And as you can see, these look like they just were made yesterday. Uh, they have been around for years. They're high quality materials. They have been carefully handled. And children, it's not a free for all. They don't come in and roll things around the room. They're shown how something's done and then they enjoy working with them. What else do we have? Okay, um, I showed you the fish puzzle, but we get to <clears throat> this um, second year, we're starting to learn the names of the parts of the fish. And so we have a lovely aquarium and they love the fish and they love to feed the fish. And so what would be more natural than to learn the names of the parts of the fish? And so there's the caudal fin, so only the caudal fin is colored. And the pectoral fins, the gill openings, the dorsal fins on the top. And so they'll be learning the names. And then when they're looking at the fish, they may notice that that little caudal fin, <laughs> the tail, <laughs> When it goes really fast, that fish is swimming through the water. And so it, it, it's an opening of more awareness to life around them. And we have matching, so they can match that. They get the names and they can match them. And then later, they read these words, but we're not there yet. They're not really reading these words at second year usually. Okay, second year. Okay, and I have, we showed the animals, uh, we had matching animals, but we can have everyday things, like this is a sewing basket. Oops, this goes in there. Um, these are everyday things. We have scissors, thread, thimble, tape measure, pin cushion, buttons, a needle threader. Straight pins, needles. Okay, this is not this is not for them to sew a project to take home. This is for them to learn the names of these tools. And yes, we will learn. To, we'll, we will have sewing projects definitely, but to learn the names of everyday things is um, part of what we like to do. So we enjoy collecting um, things for them to match. So, Teresa, do you have anything that you want to add about this? <laughs> so, I think did I see we, that? <laughs> it's fascinating that you've been pointing out that the first year student is the movement and very um, just getting that coordination and control of movement. And then we move into the second year, and now it's more language heavy. Yeah. But, and there is more sequence. So, it's that cognitive development that we are fostering for them yeah. to be able to follow a sequence of steps and if I remember math correctly there's a lot of sequence in higher math when you're problem solving for instance right. and so this is training it's just mental training for when they encounter that later their brain is friendly with it because they've done it so much in our school that there is a way to do something and there is a there's a there's a sequence and a way to do it like you said there there is time for creativity we're not saying that there is a time for creativity you'll see that but it's right. very important to have a foundation of how things are done the proper way Be, and and they are in that sensitive period for order yes, so they, they like are. this yes whereas at a later stage of development right. no thanks right i'm gonna do it my way exactly <laughs> and they will get to that when they get to those other stages of development. But here at our school, we are helping them exactly where they are, which is order, and they love precision. I do. Yes, I see they that. do. I see that in in the mornings when I'm here, and just how they will watch, just almost with wonder, when we're right. doing something precisely and carefully, and and they want to do it too. It draws them in. Yes. <laughs> and the other part about this, which you reminded me that I had mentioned, is this fosters concentration. Oh, right. Exactly. And, and, and what, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to, uh, to 
the joy to have the opportunity in a room full of 18 other children yes. and three adults and who knows what's going on um, to be able to actually focus on something and to discover that, oh, oh it's a square <laughs> you know, or something. Who knows what they're thinking? We don't have to know. But to, or to play the bells or to, to actually work on getting the gradation of pink. Um, it takes concentration. And that's and and yeah, well, well, that's what we're also and that's the higher that's, that's the higher education. education is the concentration yeah. and so helping them to get there. Yeah. So okay. okay. So okay, we're we've done there. your one, your two, and now we are on to your three. When the child is now at the top of the class at our Montessori, and they are they've gone through all of these lessons, and now they are ready for more intensive. Yeah, work in our school. So please, and this is our yeah. Story. This is and this is this is like the culmination of is. everything that they've been right. working towards. It all comes together in year three. Yeah, it really does. And their their independence, their problem solving, their sense of responsibility. And even as we go along, the little ones come in. They're tripping over rugs. They're <laughs> dropping yes. the waters. There's a lake over here, mm -hmm. and they're doing the best they can. Right. And and the four year olds are kind of the policemen of the world. Yeah. They're kind of going, "What's <laughs> you know, let me help you?" That's not how we do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. They're the role givers. Um, but they see how far they've come. Mm -hmm. If we had, if I had a room full of three year olds, I'm sorry, I would not. <laughs> right. I wouldn't want to learn. And, and a, a room of five-year-olds would almost be too easy. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're more like us. They are. They are so but the that. character development that they gain yes. from seeing life mm -hmm. in its progression, and they see where they've come mm -hmm. and, and where they were. And, and so they're, as okay. Teresa said, at the top here, they're doing things that these children aren't ready for yet. And these get to see it, and they worship the old. <laughs> yes. And they get to see it, so when they get there, it's not such a, it's not totally new. They've seen it, but and now they get sense to, of it. Now they actually get to dive in and do yeah. it. Yeah. So there's a little delayed gratification. Yeah, delayed gratification as well. <laughs> there's so there's much. a lot. I know, it's a lot. Okay. Okay, okay so, so take it away. Um, all right, so we're still doing some practical life. Okay, so we dusted. Spoon, poured, polished. Um, okay, so now we can do food preparation or much more um, complex lessons, more more sequence, and that include a little danger. I mean, because they have a real they have a real peeler and a real knife. The knife we don't keep on the tray. They need to come to the teacher, and they have all their things ready. All those things laid out, and so they would come say, uh, "Miss Teresa, would you please? I'm ready for the knife. I'm I'm ready to cut my potato." And so she would give them a knife, and then she would be very aware of who has a knife and where they are, and so she wouldn't leave the room. <laughs> she would be not hanging over them, but she'd be very aware of if you know who is getting too close or whatever. <laughs> but um, so this is this is real life. So we have. Um, we have a bowl for washing our potato, and then we will be having gardens here at some point. I mean, this is the first year. It takes time to get everything. But ideally, they grow potatoes. This is Idaho, after all. And the, the joy of digging up potatoes, you just never know what you're going to get. And the joy of that, and they're so muddy, and you have to wash them. And so we scrub our potato and water and we rinse it off and <clears throat> and then we have a cloth ready to dry it and, and and peel it we put it in another bowl of water that has salt in it and so they learn about oxidization that it the salt keeps it from oxidizing turning brown and they'll be slicing the potatoes and putting them in a little jar, taking them home, or maybe we'll cook them here and everybody can have some. But, um, so there's a bucket and a pitcher and four bowls and a brush. Oh, here's the salt. Uh, a little bit of salt, there's probably a spoon here somewhere. Everything they need, and, and they would just go to the, a little basket that has some potatoes in it. There's also orange juice squeezing where they could invite a child after they have done the oranges 
to have a glass of juice with them. Uh, apple peeling and cutting, they can, they can share the apple. Banana cutting, melons, whatever's growing in the garden. Okay, well, it's easy to grow zucchini, so we always, <laughs> the children all would love zucchini and kale. They would eat those because they grew them. And uh, I mean, I've been teaching for three decades or more. <laughs> and so always a garden, always flowers. Um, so a lot of sequence, a lot of sequence here, and it's real life. It's not, we're going to pretend to peel potatoes. We, we're going to peel potatoes. And then we have composting. We take our peels to the chickens. Or Wait, I don't think they eat potato peels. But, but we take our carrot peels to the chickens. Hopefully we'll get some chickens someday. <laughs> we need our bigger <laughs> Um Okay, so that's just an idea of a practical life because it moves into gardening and earthworms and composting, and it leads into nutrition. It leads into farming and it, it leads to so much into uh, botany and zoology and, and lots of disciplines. Um, they may have done this puzzle second year, uh, this puzzle of the tree, and they've seen trees before, but here's a puzzle that just it gives them a good impression of the roots, the trunk, the branches, the leaves. And again, it could be some silly puzzle because they love puzzles, but why not? Something that leads, leads to real knowledge. Um, the third year, um, they will be doing projects because they're now reading and writing and making their own little book. It says, my book of the parts of the tree, botany drawer one. So we have five drawers in our botany cabinet. That's just drawer one. So this child, Isabel, has colored the full tree on the first page. The tap root, the roots, I don't know if you can see this, and just the trunk. So everything's, and she's written up here, trunk, and she's colored just the branches and written branches, just the leaves, and then the crown, which is all the leaves at the top of the tree. So she saved that for last. Um, and so this is an example of some projects that the children can do, and there's projects that they can do with the fish, where they can make a book of parts of a fish, or parts of a flower, um, and you know, all, all the vertebrates, or and we have, I think, the honeybee, the grasshopper, and butterflies. I think those are the ones that we have here, the invertebrates. Um, so that's an example of projects. Here's another puzzle. So we have the botany puzzle, so we have the zoology, um, botany, oops, the tree, um, geometry, <laughs> okay, and so here's geography. So this is the first map. So this is the simplest one, but this is the, the two hemispheres. We have a sequence of lessons before we get here, but it's just a puzzle. Again, it has a knob, so there, it's continuing to refine their movement. But these are delicate, so I don't, if the child hasn't gained carefulness yet, uh, then they wouldn't be invited to do this yet. So they, they have to be shown something before they can just work with it, but all the parts. So as a, a four-year-old, they may be invited to start working with maps, and they're just simply puzzles. But then projects, so here's an example of a map, like the children do, and um, where they've... Uh, we have a template where they can make the circle, but they color in the, the continents and label them. And so we have North America, the United States of America, all of South America, there's Canada, Asia, Africa, um, Europe, and Antarctica. So all of the continents and then some of the other ones where they can make maps. So I've had children make the map of Europe and, and write the labels. <laughs> and not that they know how to spell Czechoslovakia or Switzerland. It's not that they know how to spell that, but we have labels that they could copy. We have control maps that show what the names are that they copy. But it's very advanced work, considering where they were just two years before that. What about music? Um, so let me just bring, so as I said, there are eight bells but I just brought five of them because if we brought three more, they'd fall off the edge. 
Uh, so now we've listened to the bell, we matched the bell, we've done a gradation of the bell, we've learned the names of the bells. So finally we can start playing those songs. They eventually will come to where they can play. This is in the key of C, and so they can play lots of songs on there. This moves to piano, so we will eventually have a piano, so the children can then advance from here into piano. Um, we had the button frame, and there's a whole series of dressing frames, but the, kind of the top of the line is the time frame, which is very thoughtful uh, that the ties are different colors so we can kind of see what's happening and when you think about a child trying to tie a shoe or tie a bow the chin's in the way the knees in the way but here it's right in the table right in front of us I don't know if I can do it upside down or not but there's definite steps in how we tie and so we show them and and they get to you know, the teacher will show them and, and they can practice, practice, practice. Um, so Teresa, what did we leave out? I think we kind of did this table. I think we so did do hopefully you have a sense of uh, moving through. If we just started at age four, they're, this is kind of young for them. Mm -hmm. And if, and then it would be hard for them to have the foundation to go there. So it, it is a three-year program that, um, they will be ready for elementary school, but the goal, the whole purpose is not getting them ready for elementary school. It's really a preparation for life. Right. Education for life. Yeah. That's what we are all about at our yeah. Montessori for three to six year olds. Preparation for life. Because in the midst of all this too, like so we didn't talk about the social, we talked a little bit about the maneuvering with trays, but they really do form a community where they look out for each other. The older ones helping the younger ones and are like mentors to them. So it's yeah. a beautiful okay. education for them. So thank you. All right, so we'll, 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 we'll clear the table. <laughs> we'll bring back language and math and we'll see and we'll you tomorrow. Dive into academics tomorrow. Thank okay. you.